Good morning, Fret friends. We have a new project. Um, without explaining too much, I'll show you the guitar. I've already got the strings off and my nuts off. It is a Jim Harley. I don't really know anything about this guitar at all. I don't know anything about Jim Harley. I just know that the owner of this guitar loves it. Um, and he's deemed that he wants it back up to scratch, up to spec. Now it's a bound neck, but we've determined that it does need a refret. It needs a refret because the frets are too low and they're too worn. And if you want to have a look at those. I measured the frets and we're about 0.8mm high, which is fine. But with the divots and the grooves, once we've skimmed these and lowered them, we're going to be down to about 0.6mm. And I won't have enough material there to re-crown once I've flattened them. Uh, they being flat, that being the crown. I'd have nothing to work with. So I've recommended that it has a refret. So he's commissioned the refret. It says go for it. Now, I know some of you have been thinking, what's the point spending all that money on a refret? Because it's an expensive job when the guitar's not worth that. Well, okay, the guitar may not, may or may not be worth that. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I do know he paid around about £200 for it over 20 years ago. End of the day, it is a Korean-made Jim Harley guitar, according to the label. The model is GJA ED 4C. It's got labelled Canadian Winter Four Seasons by Jim Harley. You can look at the label inside there. That doesn't really mean anything to me. That just tells me who's built it, where it was built, and the model number. I don't know what woods it's made of. I personally don't really like the look of it. it looks a bit. It's a bit like caramel compared to Swiss chocolate to me. You get what I'm saying with that. But it is a well-built, solid, and sturdy guitar. And looking at the body, there's no, there's no great belly bulge in there. There's no warping. Uh, the neck is straight. So. It is, to me, worthy of getting it refretted. Uh, it's definitely worth that. The guy who owns it loves it. There's another problem with it as well. It says the battery just drains. As soon as you put battery in, it's, it's dead the next day. That's because, for whatever reason, someone has put a mono jack in there when it needs a stereo one. One of the wires has just fell off, taking it out. So I'm going to replace the mono jack with a stereo one, get all the electrics sorted out, and that way, when he has a battery, and with it being a stereo jack, because the ring wire just tells you if the battery's if it's plugged in, it's going to use a battery. If the plug's taken out, or the jack, the, the guitar lead is taken out, it's not going to drain the battery. That's why we use a stereo jack, three wire affair, you see. So I'm going to crack on with this. The wire I've chosen to do, in fact, I'll show you. If you want to look at the frets closely, let me bag it just here, and you can have a look. I've determined that there's a refret. Seller agrees we are going to go for a refret. The wire I've chosen to go on this is I have some Hosco Japanese made 18% uh, nickel silver wire, which is harder than regular fret wire. It's roughly the same size as it's a little bit wider, it's 2.4 millimeters wide and it's quite high. Um, I think is it about well, 1.4 high? I'm not sure, but the good thing about it is I can skim quite a bit off and still have a lot. Um, left to work with later on, but I might, I'm thinking considering leaving the fret wire cut quite high anyway because it will give us somewhere down the line 10, 15, 20 years down the line if we get a lot more wear on it, which we likely won't because it's really hard fret wire, we can still skim some more off the top and we get a fret level out of it. It's going to have a new nut, obviously. Um, I will be going and choosing a um, Tusk nut, Tusk T U S Q, not T U S K. It's not Tusk from Elephant, it is a man made substance. Uh, that replaces tusk bone or whatever. They're made by Graftech. Man made substance, it's self lubricating. They're the nuts I always use and recommend. So that's what we are going to do. It'll be having a new set of strings, um, and that'll be it. So without further ado, I am going to crack on with the work. Um, and all being well, it's going to be a good job. So stay tuned, and I will come back with updates as and when. Right, just showing the, the removal of the frets. There's a little bit of damage here on the fingerboard, which you may be able to see. We can sort that out. We'll, we'll uh, sand that out. Um, what I'm doing is, I don't know how these are glued in, or if they, even if they are glued in. But I'm going to show the reason I'm removing these frets. And I think you'll see there, because there's no material to work with. The height of the fret here, we're about 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0.8. If I'd have levelled these, because they've got so much wear, if I'd have levelled these, there'd have been nothing left to work with. It's the reason we're removing these. Uh, I'm going to show you how I do remove them. And sometimes I use a split stop, a chip stopper. This could be, and sometimes I don't. It depends. I do it by feel. Um, I'm going to use, if I do use one, I'm going to use a thicker one, 0.02. Uh, 
of an inch thick. I don't know what it is in millimetres. I don't know. The Americans still are using imperial measurements. The fret pullers, basically a pair of pliers ground flat at the bottom so we can get right in and under the fret. Oh, we're going to stick that there, we're going to grab hold of it. And I have an adapted soldering iron with a groove. It's a 40 watt soldering iron. It's like a welder sometimes. It's too hot for a 40 watt iron. I don't use this, I use the soldering station. So I had this knocking about. It was cheap from Maplin's a few years ago. And I basically cut a groove into the um, bit. Uh, just so I could slide it along frets and heat the frets up. And that's what we're going to do. And sometimes you get, you, you'll see the glue melt. And in this instance, I've not seen any meltage of glue. But these frets are really, really flat in the centre here. There's nothing. There's no material there at all. It's the reason I'm removing them and replacing them. Now you see the problem we get is going to be working around this binding because we can't put the fret through this binding. So we've got to cut the edges off the tang and fit it inside this slot, which makes it more difficult to clean inside the slot because we've got to remain, we've got to retain the depth inside there for the tang of the fret. So it just makes it a little bit more awkward. Um, and I think we should be warming off there. And I'm going to carefully start removing this fret. Start on this far side. You see it's trying to chip there. I don't want any chipping really. But if I do get some chipping, I want to keep it to a minimum. So, I'm working against myself. I'm working the wrong way, but sure we'll get there. That's not even in the right place. Let's try and get it. There you go. There you go. We're in there. And this, pushing this in as we go along, is meant to stop any chips. I don't, it has been, because I've been glued in, I don't know what kind of glue, but we go a little at a time. And there you go, that's a fret removed. Now you see there, we have got one chip there. I will fix these chips with a bit of rosewood dust later. Uh, but that is not that bad. I've seen a lot worse. So that's coming out okay. We've got one chip there, we can fill that in with a bit of rosewood dust and a bit of super glue. We're going to sand the whole fingerboard when it's done anyway. So let me just do a couple more wire here. I don't want to be melting this binding either. A job like this, it's um, it's labour intensive. It's not it's a tiring job. It's not you know it, it can be a little bit laborious though because it takes time for a refret, even something like this, which are class as okay. It's got binding that it makes it more difficult, but you're looking at minimum eight hours for a refret. Now if I was charging my hourly rate, you'd be looking at 30 quid an hour. It's 240 quid, we don't charge that for a refret. So I think when someone, you come and ask someone how much for a refret, they tell you 150 quid, snap it up. Because 10, 12 hours. Uh, your main work is in the leveling, recrowning, and polishing but all of this job you've got to know what you're doing you can't just you can't just come and hack the frets out and just bang some more in it doesn't work like that see look if i've got enough heat in there i shouldn't have to use the chip stopper there you go that's one fret there's no chip there's no chip in there that fret is hot but you see See how thin they are. There's nothing to work with here. There's no material left on that. These frets are at the end of their life. And again, no chipping on there. It's brilliant. Again, we've got a little bit on the binder there, but when we put the new frets in, that's going to be covered. Uh, I will show you how we um, how we cover all that later when I get to doing it. I was not going to make this video that long-winded because it's for church and I thought they might show a bit in church, but I am. I'm going to video all of the work. But these are coming out quite nice. I've had them come out a lot worse. So something like this, you've got to take your time. Because if you don't take your time, you're going to get a lot of chipping. And, and repairing chips takes a long, long time. I 
I don't want to be melting anything, I don't want to be melting the binding so we got to be careful when we get to the edges. This has never had a refret before. I know that um, Richard has had this guitar from new. I'd imagine he bought it, I don't know, about 95-ish, I guess, I don't know. So it's 20, 23 years old. I've got no idea, we didn't really talk in depth about it. I just know he's had it, he had this before, he, his, his son was born, his son I believe is 21. Josh is his name. And Joshua is his name, oh. And there you go, that is four frets out, and they have come out really quite well. I've got one fret, uh, one chip to repair there. So I'm going to turn off the video for now, and I shall come back. Um, in fact, I tell you what, I'm going to remove one of these, because then I can show you the divots, and I'll show you why we're doing the fret. Stay tuned, bear with me, let's get this one out. Let's go for number three. Because this end down here, this is where they are really warm. Richard did ask if we could just replace half the frets and leave the other half. And the reason we couldn't do that is, I cannot match this fret wire. Uh, I don't know what, it's probably 12% nickel silver. I could guess the size, but it is, you know, I'm guessing. I can find no information on this guitar at all. Now, when it comes to doing necks and frets, I don't scrimp. If it needs a refret, it has a refret, it has a full refret. I go with the very best quality wire, Japanese Hosco wire. It's 18% nickel silver, which is twice as hard as this stuff, so it will last twice as long. This has been on here 20 years, so it shouldn't need another refret. When I put my new fret wire in, 18% nickel silver is hard fret wire. I recommend it to all my clients. And there you go, got some good heat in there. Sometimes they don't want to come out, you just have to get underneath them. So you see I'm going just a little bit at a time there. And there you go, the fret is out. Again, we have no chip in there. It makes my job so much easier. We have no chip in it. Oh, you see I've already removed the knot. We'll be sanding down this fingerboard with a radius block. I would imagine this is something like a 16 inch radius. That means the arc of a curve over here is 16 inches so from the center 16 inches and draw a big circle and that will be the radius it won't be flat it might look flat but it's not it's not flat at all it's got a radius in it i would imagine this is 16 or 20 inch i'll find out in a while right this is the reason i'll go for a full refret look at the divots in here you see that they're worn right in there's no material there to work with because if i'd have filed them flat you'd have just been left with like a razor blade thickness left that's why the reason we're doing a refret yeah we made the right call there uh, end of the day 23 years of frets on one guitar before it's had a refret that's fantastic value for money you know and even if you go and pay 220 pound for a refret it's a pound a year this will last 35 years once it's had a refret it's not even a pound a year is it i mean a 10 pound a year or whatever and well it's, it's 10 pound a year but so what you know, you're going to get these new frets that are going in will last a lifetime. So that's it. I'm going to go and pull all of the other frets. Um, if there's any I need to fill in, like this little divot here, I will show you how we do that using some wood dust. Um, what I'll do is I'll get a piece of Teflon in the slot so we don't drop any glue in there. We'll drop a little bit of wood dust in there and a tiny bit of super glue just to fill that little hole. Uh, really simple to do that. But I'm going to crack on with the rest of the work now. And I'll come back and show you the result once I've got all of the frets out. And here we are, and that went really well. Just sit the guitar up. You'll see that all the frets are out. There are a couple of places, there are two chips in this when I remove frets. Getting two chips when removing frets is remarkable. Um, they came out really, really well. There is a chip there, just below my finger. And the other one, I'm going to struggle to find it. Just here, just above my finger on this side. There, that's it. It's the only two chips there. A little bit of marking to the frets, uh, to the binding. Now you see this binding, it's intact. We're not cutting through that to put the new frets in. We're going to have to place the frets inside of this binding, each side. It's going to go inside. So what we're going to do is, 
This is why it's so much more difficult to do a bound neck. Well, I'm going to take the frets. I'll use one of the old ones. This bottom part here is called the tank, and that tank sits inside the groove. And you see at the end there, it's got that end nipped off right up to the top there, and this end nipped off. That's called an overhang. And we're going to have an overhang. I'm going to have to cut out before I insert the new frets. I'm going to cut these little edges off so it sits inside the fingerboard. See how it works. Um, which is it's more time. It takes more time. It takes another two hours um, on top of the job to do that. It's why I charge extra for doing a bound neck. Um, the frets. The reason we remove the frets is just bear with me a second. Yeah, I had to take that call. That's a guy coming to pick his guitar up shortly. So I don't remember where I was now. Um, I was probably talking about the chipping, but minimal chipping. Um, so all I've got to do now is clean up that fingerboard. There is also a big divot here, string wear. And I've had these before, I had it on a cramp. I'm going to fill that in, get a bit of rosewood dust in there and a bit of super glue. Once I've sanded it all down, I'm going to re radius the fingerboard. I'll find out what radius it is. It's going to be round about a 20 inch radius. So I'm going to sand this all down, uh, then it's a matter of all of these slots, they'll have a bit of glue residue in there or whatever, I'm going to have to go in there with, I have got um, a tool to do that, let's just see if it's in here, yeah, here it is, and basically it's an exacto knife, it's exactly what it is with a curved blade on it, and this blade is exactly half a millimetre wide, which will fit right in them slots, which it does, and we're just going to scrape can't see it there. Uh, take my word for it, we're just going to scrape inside the fret slots and I'm going to clean them all out. You see like that, look. Nice and steady. And we'll just clean them all out, make sure we're all, you know, we can get a new fret in there. So it'll be a bit of scraping. Uh, I, probably, I might go in with a, it could go in with a Stanley blade first, just to soften any gun cut. And um, we'll clear all them slots out and we can look then at getting the new frets in, rather than prattle on and just talk nonsense to you because uh, you know you probably don't even know what I'm talking about, I will crack on with the job and I'll come back and show you parts of the job as and when I do them. Welcome back, now frets came out really well but I have two small chips to repair, one right here and I'm going to show you how we do that and what I've done is I've inserted a piece of Teflon, this is half a, half a millimetre thick now glue doesn't stick to Teflon, so we bang it in the slot. And what I need to do this, I need to fill. I'm going to fill this hole. But I'm not going to fill it with glue because that wouldn't be good enough. And I have got here a little bag of sawdust from Rosewood. Rosewood sawdust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small flat screwdriver, take a little bit of rosewood dust, more than I need. I'm going to bang it on the side of the guitar there. And that's it. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to put slide some across. I'm going to fill that little hole. There you see. Smooth it off. I should zoom in for this, shouldn't I? Am I zoomed in? There you go. Now you see. Got some rosewood dust in there. I'm going to take some really thin super glue. You call it CA glue over in the States. We call it super glue here. Really runny stuff. Got a little adapter on the end there so it runs out just a little bit. I've got a big massive drop there, far too much. But if we get too much, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna drop that in. That's all we're gonna do, and we're gonna push in more dust till it's full. And there you go. That's done. We've now filled in that slot. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to remove that Teflon in a moment. I'm going to take a flat file, in this case my number three Swiss file, and I'm going to carefully just file over without digging into the guitar because we're at a slight angle there. And there you go. And that is it. The little chip is now filled in. The glue's dry. We're going to remove this piece of Teflon because the glue doesn't stick to Teflon. And that's it, we have filled in that chip. What I'll do then is, if I can find anything, take a small piece of sandpaper, in this case I've got some 240 grit laying about. 
little piece of 240 grit there and I'm just I don't even know which one I've done where is this one got some more work to do there anyway because that was being a bit proud if you remember so this needs a bit of sanding and there you go that is the chip filled the chip was there somewhere that chip and what's on that one it was on this one was it here around here there's another, another tiny one there don't even need to fill that because the fret is going to cover that but that is how we fill a chip so as you can probably see right now we've lost the light a bit um it's, it's dark outside uh, so i can't really do a lot about it um but the guitar i'm going to wrap up this part of the video right here right now because i'm at a stage now where i'm ready to do the refret I've filled all the chips, all the, the two chips we had in there. Um, I've prepared the fingerboard. It just needs a light sanding uh, just to get rid of any scratches. I don't think there are any scratches in there. Just needs a little bit of a light sanding though. Uh, there was a big divot in there which I filled in with rosewood dust and super glue and sanded down. I'm going to give it a light sanding, make sure the radius is correct. I know it's a 16 inch radius on here. And uh, once that's done, I'm ready to install the new frets so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wrap up this part of the video now this is going to be the end of part one um, and in part two we are going to basically install the frets so stay tuned for that and i'll catch you again later